many of you are going to help me this morning? Amen. Pastor, I'm going to do a very short reading on scripture text. And I'll ask you if you would please to read our focus verses, Psalms 22, 1 and 2, here in just a moment. Many of you are familiar with the story of the man, a man by the name of Job? Most everyone's heard of Job, know something about him, know something about the story in the Bible about him. None of us want to go through, Brother Lawson, what Job went through. And we're going to delve into that just a little bit this morning. Some interesting things about that story. With the Lord's help, we want to talk about just for a few moments this morning. So I'll jump right into a very brief reading. Uh, Job chapter 3. And read verses 25 and 26. The Bible said, For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is coming to me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Pastor, would you please read our focus verses, Psalms 22, 1 and 2, please. My God, my God. Let's go to the Lord and ask him to be with us today and talk to our hearts. Dear Lord, we love you and we appreciate you, Lord. We thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for our privilege of being in your house this morning, Lord, to <clears throat> read and study your word. We just ask you to speak to our hearts, Lord. Talk to our hearts, Jesus. Help us to gain something from this lesson, something that we can take home with us, Lord, that will strengthen us, encourage us, and help us, Lord. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. I'm going to spend almost all of our time this morning on the subject of a man by the name of Job. However, there are others in the Bible, stories in the Bible, and great men of the Bible. Brother Rich, they endured problems too. We would like to say, well, we serve the Lord the best of our ability. Sometimes, you know, maybe we question ourselves and say, Lord, I should have done this, or I should have done that, or I could have done better. The Lord knows where we're at. We ask him for strength, and we ask him for help. He will provide us with strength and help, and he will encourage us. But we might say to ourselves, well, if I'm trying to live for, for God, then I'm going to circumvent all of these problems that life throws at us. How many of you found that to be true? I don't see one hand go up. And I wish we could all raise both hands like we did on the heat. <laughs> but it's called life. This isn't heaven. That's what we're striving for is heaven and to make it to heaven. And the Lord never promised us we would live a trouble-free existence but what he did promise us, Sister Rich, is he would be right there with us to encourage us and to help us through every trial that we go through. It's no wonder to me there are as many problems with substance abuse in the world as there is today. People feel like they have to have some relief somewhere. And that's only very temporary relief. And then you wake up tomorrow and you have a whole new set of problems. You don't feel good. Sometimes you don't know what you did while you were involved in the substance abuse. And it's, it's, not, a, it's not a fix. It's a very temporary band-aid. But serving the Lord, even though we may have trials and tribulations and challenges along the way, we have a hope at the end, Brother Rich. We can flip back to the back of the book, and if you read the back of the book, you know who wins. It's not the enemy, it's not the devil, it's not the enemy, enemy of our soul. You and I win. 
Our job in the meantime is just to try to do the right thing, try to serve the Lord, try to live for him to the best of our ability. And he promised us he will be with us and he will help us. So as we begin this lesson this morning, Job 1 and 6 tells us that the angelic sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And guess who showed up? The Bible says Satan come along also. Many of you found he always has his nose in places that don't belong. <laughs> always trying to stir up problems and cause trouble and turmoil. And verse 7 says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? In other words, what are you doing today? And I'm just paraphrasing. And Satan told him, he said, I'm going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. And he wasn't going to and fro trying to do good. He was going back and forth and up and down in the world looking for someone that he could attack, looking for some problems he could cause, because that's what the devil does. He does bad things. He causes problems in any area that he can. Then in verse 8, the Lord asked him, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? For the bower of Job was a good man. There's a lot of good men in this world. We know if I ask you to name a list of good men, you'd write down a bunch of men that you consider good men. But I don't know that I could ever write one person down that I could say is a perfect man. The only one I know that's perfect and ever has been and ever will be is Jesus Christ. He walked this terra firma called earth for 33 and a half years. And you say, well... He was God manifest in the flesh. He wasn't going to have problems. Oh, he had a whole lot of problems. Yeah, he, he tried to do good, Brother Bauer, and they tried to kill him. They'd accuse him falsely of things that he'd done, and all he was trying to do was heal people, help people, and tell them what they needed to do. And yet they won't. And they did in the end. Of course, it was God's master plan. He laid down his life. They didn't take it from him. But in the end, they did kill him. So Satan couldn't deny that Job was a righteous man. But in essence, what he said is that if you stop blessing him, then he'll live a different life. In other words, if you read Job, the Lord, the, the book of Job, God had blessed him immensely with family, material things, I mean, how many of you found if you serve the Lord, there are blessings associated with it? We talked a moment ago about there will be trials and tribulations along the way, but there are a whole lot of blessings comes with serving the Lord. Family, friends, things the Lord bless us, blesses us with. And he did Job. He blessed Job in a marvelous way. And... The devil said, well, if you take your hand off of him and you don't bless him and multiply everything that he's got, then things won't be that way. So the Lord decided he would silence the devil by showing him that Job's righteousness was not based upon what he had given him, but it was based upon him being a genuine, God-fearing man. There's only one, one problem here. The Lord didn't bother to tell Job what was going on. Job's over here going about his life, doing what he normally does. And behind the scenes over here, the Lord and the devil's having a conversation. And the devil is telling him, well, you just take your hand off of him and see how well he, he does. See if he still maintains his integrity with you. And the Lord said, okay. We'll just see. But he didn't go tell Job, look, I'm getting ready to test you. You're going to go through the most intense fire, fiery trial you've ever been through in your life. 
but I'll bring you out on the other side. Just serve me. How many of you ever had things happen to you and you you question God? I mean, Brother Bauer, I don't know that really there's anything. We're human. We don't understand. Now, we it's one thing to question God and it's something else to foolishly say something, you know, in the face of God. We don't, I don't want to ever find myself doing that. But, but I have had questions in my mind, thoughts in my mind. And they, he, the devil plants them there, Brother Rich. They'll roll through your mind. Well, you've been praying for rain. How's that going? <laughs> we got a little bit the other night, Sister Rich. <laughs> uh, six six o'clock in the morning, Sister Rich was texting my wife, said, how much rain you get? <laughs> I said, she cares. She's concerned about us and, and praying for us. But there, it's just life. That's all I know to say. We live in Oklahoma. It's going to be hot in the summertime. It's going to be cold in the wintertime. Sometimes you're going to get rains, and sometimes you're not, Brother Jack. But I'm, I'll be 62 years old here in a few days if the Lord takes care of me a few more days. And, and I'm still here. I'm fat as I've ever been, maybe a little fatter. <laughs> I've not missed any meals. I still have clothes on my back and a roof over my head. All the things that I need, God has always still provided. Yeah. And I believe he always will Amen. still provide. That doesn't mean we won't have other dry years along the way. But it means he will always be with us. So God told Satan that he could attack Job, but he placed limits on him. With Bowery, he said, you can't attack his health. So the devil immediately went to work on Job. <laughs> he didn't waste any time. He jumped right on the situation. So one day, one of Job's servants came running to him. Now, follow me here just for about the next couple of minutes and just put yourself in Job's shoes for, for just a moment here. One of Job's servants came running to him and said, the Sabaeans raided and killed your servants with the sword and took all the oxen and the donkeys, and only I escaped. The Sabaeans raided and killed your servants with the sword and took all your oxen and your donkeys, and I made it out to run and tell you about it, but only me. And while he was still speaking, another servant ran up. And he said, fire from heaven fell and burned up your sheep and shepherds. And again, he said, only I escaped. So he's lost in, in a matter of time that we've been talking here about what's going on. He's lost all of his donkeys. He's lost all of his oxen. He's lost all of his sheep. And he lost his shepherds. I don't ever want to try to Make it through life without God's hand of protection and his hedge around us. Because the devil can snuff us out just like that. In a moment, in an instant, without God's hedge of protection right. about us. Right. I don't want to try it, ever, without God's protection. <clears throat> While that man, the second man, was still speaking, yet another servant ran up. This is the third one now. He said, the Chaldeans attacked and took all your camels and kills your servants, and only I escaped. So his camels are gone, his servants are gone, his donkeys are gone, his sheep are gone, a lot of his men are gone. In just a matter of a very few moments, according to the Bible, Job's wealth had vanished. And he was a very wealthy man. He had a lot of stuff that God had blessed him with. And all of that was gone. While Job was still trying to process all the losses, still another servant ran up. So now we're on the fourth man. I bet he's, he's looking out there. And he's, no, I don't want to see anymore. <laughs> I don't want to hear anymore. I can't take anymore. And this was the worst of all. This fourth man, Brother Bauer, said, it's your sons and your daughters. 
And he's thinking, not my children, not my kids. Take all my stuff, but Lord, please don't take my kids. He said, they were all at your oldest son's house, and a storm destroyed the house, killing every one of them. Now his most precious possessions were taken from him. He's lost everything. Just, just like I said a moment ago, put yourself in this situation. None of us here have what Job had. But we all have things that the Lord's blessed us with. That's maybe a lifetime accumulation of things. Our families be number one that the Lord's blessed us with our families. And there it's all gone. Nothing left. What would we think? What would we do? What can you say? Many men would probably say, well, I'm just going to curse God and die. I don't care about living. You don't have anything left to live for. But the Bible said, Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and he worshipped. There's a reason why the Lord had said that's a good man and even called him a perfect man. I hope and pray, my prayer is, Lord, I hope I never have to endure anything like that. Just protect us and help us and keep a hedge about us. Because I don't think many men could have come through it like Job did. With the Bauer, I don't know other than he, he maintained his integrity with God. He trusted God with everything he had is the only way he got through it. And bear in mind, as we mentioned a moment ago, he didn't know why this was all happening. So wouldn't you go back and you would question in your mind, what have I done, Lord, to deserve this? Have I done something that I shouldn't have done, that I didn't know about? Hadn't done anything. God just didn't bother with telling him what was going on. Job 1 and 22 says, In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. A man of integrity. So the devil reappeared in the heavenly court. And I'm paraphrasing. How many of you know he don't give up easy? He's not a quitter. He never gives up. He never stops. He never quits until you take your last breath. That's why we need the hand of God upon us and protecting us all the time. Because Brother Rich, it's an onslaught from hell all the time that he's casting, throwing things at us, trying to destroy. That's his job, to try to take as many people with him as possibly can. I seen a, a little deal on my phone a day or two ago. <laughs> This little event in July with this heat just lets us know why we don't want to be lost and go to hell. This is just a, a drop in the bucket. This will end one of these days. That never will end. Right. That torment will go on and on and on. And that's not what I say. That's what the Word of God says. I don't want to go there. The flip side is if we make it to heaven, problems are gone. Yeah. Devil's gone. He won't be there, Brother Bauer. He'll be in eternal torment, and there'll be peace and joy and contentment. There'll be no sickness. There'll be no death. There'll be no 105-degree days. It'll just be all good because God has gone to prepare a place for us that where he is, there we may be also. So as I mentioned, the devil reappeared. And this time, he said, if you'll let me touch his body, he'll curse you and die. So the Lord said, okay, touch his body, but you can't take his life. Notice how God always put stipulations on him. He said, you can do this, but you can't do that. That lets you know who's in charge. That lets you know who's in control of the situation. The Lord is. The devil can only go as far, Brother Lawson, as he's allowed to go in our life. Because when the Lord says, you can't step past here, I've got them covered with my blood. That's the end of the road for the enemy. That's as far as he can go. 
So again, immediately, <clears throat> the devil went out, and this time he afflicted Job with boils. Read it. Read, read the book of Job. He afflicted him with boils, and he was covered from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Now picture this shell of a man that's lost everything he had, one of the most wealthiest men in the world, and he's lost it all, and now he's lost his health. He has nothing left. He just literally has nothing left. He has no family left. All of his animals are gone. All of his, everything's gone. There's nothing left. And now he's sitting there in a pitiful condition, scraping those bulls, and still wondering why. Don't you think he probably wanted to know why? Why, Lord? What have I done? And I'm getting ready to close. The Bible says through all this, Job maintained his integrity with God. Again, he didn't know why all this happened. But he still just knew that he trusted the Lord with all of his heart, soul, mind, and strength. He even had a group of friends that come and sit down. Call them friends if you want to. <laughs> they wouldn't be very good friends. They looked him over, and, and I believe the Bible says, Brother Bauer, they didn't, he didn't say a word for seven days. He didn't have anything to say. What could he say? He just sat there. And then they began accusing him. You've done something, Job. There's no way in the world a man have to endure all this stuff and all these problems unless you've done something. He hadn't done a thing. He just tried to maintain his integrity with the Lord. And as I asked you a few moments ago, sometimes every one of us have questioned God. If, we're, if we'll be honest, we might shake our head and say, no, nah, I never questioned God. If we're honest, we've questioned God. Why, Lord? Why did things have to be this way? We might know someday. He might tell us. And then Brother Rich, he might not ever tell us. He didn't ever tell Job. He never did. But if we make it to heaven, I don't think we'll care. Little things down here, and, and this wasn't little, obviously, but little things that we go through, things I've been through are little compared to this. They're very small and minute that I think are important and wonder why. If I can make it to heaven, I don't think we'd be ch chasing the Lord around saying, Lord, why did that happen? I don't think we'll care. We'll just be so thankful that we've made it. And I can assure you, God will help us through it. Sometimes we have to dig down deep, Pastor, and we have to pray, and we have to seek God, and we have to ask Him for help. We have to ask Him for deliverance. We have to ask Him for strength. And He'll be there. He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He will never leave us, nor will He ever forsake us. So, how'd this turn out? Job 42 Verses 10 through 17 tells us a little bit about how, how this worked out in the end. The Bible says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house, and they bemoaned him, and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep, and 6,000 camels, and a 1,000 yoke of oxen, and a 1,000 donkeys. He had also seven sons and three daughters. He called the name of the first Jemima, and the name of the second Keziah, and the name of the third Karen Apuk. And you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Bicycle, Brother Bauer said. 
And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this lived Job another 140 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons even four generations. So Job died being old and full of days. Brother Rich, in the end, he had more than he ever had in the beginning. But he had to go through some dark times to get there. And again, I don't think the man ever knew why all this happened. But according to the Bible and what I read, he maintained his integrity with God. Did he take it in stride? Did he not wonder why? Did he not suffer? No, he, he, he did all those things. He wondered why he suffered, and he did take it, because what other options did he have? But in the end, God took care of him. And I'll leave you with this thought. If we serve him to the best of our ability, does that mean we won't make a mistake? Hadn't been that way for me, because I've made plenty of them. But... We just get back up when we fall down. We get back up and we continue on trying to serve the Lord to the best of our ability. And in the end, those problems, those trials, those things that we go through in life will be very small in the face of eternity. Because God will see us through them. He will help us. And in the end, if we serve him, he'll say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Lord bless you. I will pray.